ranking member for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as I indicated in my opening remarks, <coughs> in my view, the fiscal year uh, 24 request by the department was pretty much consistent with the bold uh, decadal vision for the commercialization of fusion energy that the administration itself announced in March of 2022, uh, and with the long-range plan that was produced by the fusion community about a year earlier. However, quite frankly, the fiscal year 25 request isn't. I'd, I'd like to know why the administration has pulled back from this. Uh, specifically, um, the proposed support for fusion material and fuel cycle R&D would say at about the same levels as fiscal year 24, which was below what was necessary, and the milestone-based public-private partnership program would actually be cut by 25 percent. Now, these two areas are the highest priority areas identified by the Fusion Energy Sciences Advisory Committee's long-range plan, no matter what budget scenario we're working under. So I'd like you to know, you know, what's the justification for not prioritizing these activities that are clearly so critical uh, to the goal of commercializing fusion energy as quickly as possible. And I'd like also to note, uh, while we continue to push for overall funding uh, for fusion as close as possible to the levels that we authorized in the Bipartisan Chips and Science Act, I realize the budget caps may prevent that from happening. So we need to know, what's the department's plan to make the necessary investments that need to be made in materials, fueling systems, and other critical technologies under the budget cap? And how are you going to leverage the public-private partnerships like the Milestone Program in which DOE recently selected eight different companies to work towards a fusion pilot project? What are the department's plans uh, for existing user uh, facilities? If you can address that, I would appreciate it very much. Yeah, ha happy to do so, and uh, happy ranking member Lofgren, and I know the chairman's uh, a huge, huge supporter and leader on fusion as well, and a number of other members on this committee. We're happy to come up here and have more detailed conversations on all the issues that you raised. Let me just say, though, incredibly uh, clearly, I, I am personally a huge fusion fan, um, and I think there's a historic opportunity here for us. That's why I was so proud that we did launch the bold decadal vision uh, out there. Um, I think there's an opportunity working with the private sector. We've seen over $6 billion, as you well know, uh, from the private sector. I've had a, you mentioned a few of the companies that you visited. I've had a chance to visit to some of those uh, phenomenal entrepreneurs uh, during my time as well. And I think we need to think about orders of magnitude more on the fusion funding side of things. It, There's it, a competition going on right now. It, if I may, I don't disagree. The problem is the budget, the request by the administration does not match so, what you were saying. So uh, as you said, we uh, submitted a budget request in FY24 of around a billion dollars or so. Uh, we were all quite disappointed, and it sounds like you yourself, and thank you for all the efforts to try to get as much as we could out of that. We ended up getting an FY24 only $790 billion right. uh, in that budget, uh, which was disappointing. Uh, it is a very budget-constrained world that we're living in, and FY25 is a very budget-constrained world. You mentioned that as well. I had a chance to talk to our Appropriations Subcommittee Chairman, who's part of this committee as well, and I know they're marking up their bill this week, and I think we'll see a very constrained budget on that. So candidly speaking, when we look at where Congress has provided us money previously, we try to make as much headroom as we possibly can in a very budget-constrained world for an awful lot of priorities. And so that's where what you see reflected in FY25 well, requests. Well, let me just say, uh, you know, I appreciate your enthusiasm for fusion and mine and the chairman's as well, but the um, recommendation by the Science Advisory Committee was uh, the priorities, no matter what the budget scenario was, and the request does and, not match what the Science Advisory and, Committee asked. Let me just go to another subject, and I would like to engage further with you on this, and I'm sure the chairman would as well. The Fusion Industry Association recently submitted a proposal for a $3 billion one-time supplemental appropriations to support a specific set of facilities, programs, and research activities that would allow the U.S. to be the world leader in the emerging fusion industry over the long time. Have you t had a chance to take a look at that proposal? It's 
you know, not dissimilar from the proposed billions that the administration has made for advanced nuclear fuel production so that we can be in the lead. Have you had a chance to take a look at that proposal? Yeah, I have had, and I've had a chance to meet with the FIA and a lot of the members of the FIA. Uh, I'm very intrigued with their proposal, uh, and $3 billion is a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, when China is spending $1.5 billion a year on fusion, and we've got a real opportunity to make sure that we uh, we are leaders, continue to be leaders in this space, which we are right now. Uh, I think $3 billion in a supplemental context is very appropriate, and we're eager to work with you all, whether it's supplemental funding, as much money as we can get from an annual appropriations process. And we've made remarkable progress on our milestone program. All eight of the companies in the milestone program we have deals with now. We're working on the fire collaboratives and all the other uh, incredibly important things that you mentioned. I, I have one additional question, which I'll just put in the record, which has to do with whether the funding we've paid, uh, we have rec uh, made available for carbon uh, removal, how that's going to work in the marine environment. I'll take the answer off uh, away from the hearing. But as I close, Mr. Chairman, I'll just note that we are the leader in fusion now, but we have a bold plan. We didn't fund the plan, China funded the plan. So if we don't get ahead of this, we're not only going to lose uh, in terms of our, the world, but we're going to lose to China once again because of our lack of vision. And I think it's a, a terrible shame. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Well stated, Ranking Member. The ranking Member yields back. The Chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Posey, for five minutes. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Chairman Lucas. Uh, following up on the Ranking Member's